time now for our business update. Yuka Royer is with us in studio. Yuka, we're going to start with Facebook and the social media company once again under pressure over a data scandal. That's right. Lawmakers in the UK and the US are calling on CEO Mark Zuckerberg to explain how Cambridge Analytica, a consulting firm linked to Steve Bannon, was able to harvest user data and exploit it for political gain. A British MP has accused Facebook of misleading officials by downplaying the risk of users' data being shared without their consent. The social media company has launched an internal investigation. Catherine Biet has more. A whistleblower says his company improperly harvested data from as many as 50 million Facebook users to build profiles so voters could be targeted with political ads and stories. Imagine I go and ask you, I say, hey, if I give you a dollar, two dollars, could you fill out the survey for me? Just do it on this app. And you say, fine, right? I don't just capture what your responses are. I capture all of the information about you from Facebook. But also, this app then crawls through your social network and captures all of that data also. Chris Wiley was the research director at Cambridge Analytica, which may be best known for working on U.S. President Donald Trump's 2016 campaign. The data company has denied violating Facebook's terms. Now lawmakers on both sides of the pond are calling for an investigation. Facebook have known about this data breach for over two years. Um, they did nothing to make sure that the data that was taken was destroyed properly as they requested it should be done. How effective are Facebook actually at stopping people taking data from their platform and then using it in a way that suits them and that Facebook can't control? The outcry over the revelations has further tarnished Facebook's reputation, which is already under attack over Russia's use of the social media site's tools to sway American voters during the 2016 presidential election. Facebook says it's conducting a review to determine if the misused data still exists. Turning now to global trade and Donald Trump's facing increasing opposition within the U.S. over his policies. Well, 45 American trade groups have sent a letter to the president urging him not to impose tariffs on China. The groups include the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the National Retail Found Federation and the Information Technology Industry Council. The Trump administration uh, is set to be preparing import duties on a wide range of Chinese goods, targeting especially the high-tech companies. At this, in retaliation for Beijing forcing American firms to give up their technology secrets in exchange for being allowed to operate in China. Meanwhile, China's parliament has promoted Liu He, uh, President Xi Jinping's top economic adviser, to the post of deputy prime minister. Educated at Harvard, Liu speaks fluent English and has a deep understanding of China's economic issues. He's expected to head the recently created Financial Stability and Development Commission of overseeing policy coordination between the central bank and regula regulatory bodies. Beijing has also named Yi Gang, another U.S. educated economist, the next governor of the People's Bank of China. That's the central bank. Pretty interesting uh, appointments there in China. Let's take a quick look, though, Yuka, at the markets. What's trending on the trading floors so far this Monday? Well, a lot of attention is on the U.S. Federal Reserve. It's uh, having its uh, first policy meeting under the new chairman, Jerome Powell, this week. And it's widely expected the Fed will raise its benchmark interest rate by a quarter of a percentage point. Here in Europe, markets started the week on a rather weak note, as you can see, all in the red. Uh, with Paris, London and, um, and uh, Frankfurt down between 0.2 and 0.4 per cent. Uh, Barclays shares, though, in, uh, in London rose 3.3 per cent at the open. Earlier in Asia, it was a mixed bag. Uh, Tokyo's Nikkei closed down almost 1 per cent as a lingering cronyism scandal surrounding the Prime Minister uh, weighed on investor sentiment. And finally, Yuka, for this particular business update, a story that Apple may be secretly planning to replace Samsung displays with its own. Tell me more. And that had an impact on some uh, Asian shares of, the, uh, of uh, manufacturers that make screens for smartphones. Uh, now, this following a report that Apple is developing next-generation micro-LED screens at a secret plant in California. Bloomberg said that the phone, iPhone maker is making a significant investment into the project to produce its own displays for the first time. Apple is set to use the new technology first on its Apple Watch. 
Micro LED screens are set to allow future devices to be slimmer, brighter and less power hungry than the current OLED displays. I won't tell you how old-fashioned my current phone is. It's like I have none of that to worry about, but there you go. <laughs> Yuka Roy, thanks a lot for that business update.